This is part 1 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the use of JavaScript in a web application and the advantages of using JavaScript. To understand the use of JavaScript in a web application, let's design a web form that looks like this. This form is going to capture first name, last name and email. Once we click the submit button, we want to save that data to a SQL Server users table. I have already created a web form and the SQL Server table. Let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio first. So here I have the SQL script to create users table and this script is going to create an insert stored procedure. This stored procedure is going to insert first name, last name and email into users table. I'll have this script available on my blog in case you need it. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. I've created a new empty ASP.NET web application project. I named it demo and then within the web.config file I included a connection string to our sample database and if you look at the sample database we have users table within that and I have also designed the web form to capture the user's first name, last name and email so we have three text boxes so the end user can type the values for those three fields and we also have three label controls. I have set the font color to red because these labels will be used to display validation error messages. Basically all these three fields are going to be required fields and if the end user didn't enter data for any of the field then the respective label control will display a message stating that specific field is required. And I have also implemented the server side code. So basically within the button, I mean submit button click event handler, we are calling two functions validate form and if you look at validate form function this function returns a boolean value that is true or a false it returns true if the form has succeeded validation by that we mean you know all the fields are required if the end user has entered data for all of the fields then that validate form function is going to return true otherwise false and how are we doing that notice that within the function we have a private variable of type boolean which is initialized to true and then we are checking if the text property of the first name text box is null or empty. It will be null or empty if the end user did not enter anything. In that case, we are setting that variable to false, which means, you know, this field, first name field has failed validation. And then within the label control, uh, we are displaying first name is required error message. Else, if it is not null or empty, it comes to the else block, in which case we are setting text property to an empty string. In that case, return variable will remain true. That means, you know, so far validation has succeeded for first name text box. All right. And then if you look at the rest of the code we have here, it's exactly the same thing. We are doing exactly the same thing for the last name text box and for email text box. And finally, we are returning the return variable. If that return variable is false, then we know that the validation has failed. At least one field has failed validation. So if you look at the submit button click event handler, we're checking if validate form returns true. If that returns true, validation has succeeded, in which case call save data method. And as you might expect within save data, what code we have, we have ADO.NET code to save data to the database table. So basically we are reading the connection string from web.config file and then using that connection string we are building the SQL connection object and then we are building the SQL command object specifying the name of the stored procedure that we want to execute. In this case insert stored procedure and then since it's a stored procedure we have to tell that to the command object. We are using command type property for that and this stored procedure expects three input parameters at first name, last name, email. So we will have to specify those three parameters. So we are creating a SQL parameter object. These are the names of the three parameters. And then the values are coming from the respective text boxes on the web form. And then we are associating the parameter objects with the command object, opening the connection and executing the command. So pretty straightforward ADO.NET code. Now let's go ahead and run this application. So now the requirement of this application is to capture the data and save it to users table. And if you look at this application, it's definitely doing that. We also should have validation. Look at this when I click submit button. You know, we also have the validation in place if the end user fails to enter data for any of the fields. And then when we click the submit button, it is coming back with those validation error messages. On the other hand, if I enter data,
and then click the submit button it should save the data to the database table let's quickly check that look at that the web for application is doing what it is supposed to do at the moment if you look at the code that we have we don't have JavaScript anywhere so what is the role of JavaScript in a web application let's try and understand that now here we are validating the form now where are we validating it we are validating it on the server side so every time I click the submit button look at this we don't have any data entered in the fields so when I click the submit button what is going to happen the request is sent to the server so the request is sent over the network to the web server for processing the web server receives the request processes it and it notices that you know the form fields are missing and then it is going to send the response message again over the network back to the client so there is a round trip between the client and the web server just to let the end user know that some of the fields are missing validation now let's say the network over which the messages are exchanged is slow or let's say if the web server is busy processing other client requests then you know the end user has to wait a few seconds to get that response message back okay and all we are doing on the server now is validating and returning those validation error messages okay now let's introduce some network latency by making the thread that is currently executing our request sleep for three seconds and the way to do that is by using the thread class in threading namespace and then we've got the sleep method and we specify the time in milliseconds let's say the time is 3000 milliseconds let's go ahead and run this so now look at this when I click the submit button the end user has to wait at least three seconds to get that response message back right now if we can do that validation on the client without a post back don't you, don't you think that will be much better you know the application will be much more responsive look at this every time I click the submit button it has to kind of wait at least three seconds because we are artificially introducing that network latency in this case um, so let's see how to do that client-side validation so to do the client-side validation that's when we use JavaScript JavaScript executes on the client browser so immediately when we press the submit button if we have a JavaScript function you know that gets called and that gets executed on the client so there is no round trip between the client and the web server so the application is going to be much more responsive let's actually see how to use a JavaScript function to perform the same kind of form validation on the client side now to include JavaScript on a page there are several ways um, now one of the ways is to use the script section and define the JavaScript function on the page itself or you can have that function in an external JavaScript file we'll discuss all those details um, in a very great detail in our upcoming videos so for now understand that we need a script uh, tag and then we are going to specify the type type is going to be text slash JavaScript and language is going to be JavaScript and here we are going to include a JavaScript function to validate the form fails now we are not going to get into the basic details of JavaScript programming language we'll be doing that in our upcoming videos the main intention of this video is to understand the role or the use of JavaScript in an ASP.NET web application so to speed things up I already have a JavaScript function here so let me copy and paste this and then we'll go over that function very quickly so basically we're calling this function validate form and then just like how we have a boolean variable within the server side validation function we also have a boolean variable here in C sharp to create a boolean variable we use bool keyword but in JavaScript to create any type of variable we use the var keyword and if we are initializing that boolean variable to true and then basically you know the same type of logic here we are getting the element um, by ID that is we are retrieving the text box that captures the first name and we are checking its value if it is an empty string then we know that the end user did not enter anything into the text box in which case we are retrieving you know the label which is going to display the validation error message and we are setting the inner text property to first name is required that's the error message and we are setting return variable to false which means 
this field has failed validation. So this is our JavaScript function. Now, if the value of the first name text box is not an empty string, then it's going to come to this else part, in which case we are setting the inner text property of the label to an empty string, meaning the label has not failed validation. And this return variable will remain true. Okay, And if you look at the rest of the code, it's exactly the same thing. And we are doing that here for last name text box and here for email text box. And finally, we are returning whatever value we have in that return variable. It will be either true or false, depending on whether the fields have succeeded validation or not. So we have the JavaScript function now defined. But then when we click this submit button, that's when we want to call that JavaScript function and validate these text boxes. Okay, and if you look at the source here, look at this on click attribute. So on click, we want to call this button submit click method. And this is actually the server side function. So if you look at the code behind file, we have that on click button even handler method. So this gets called on the server side. But before that is happening, we want to call the JavaScript function that is defined on the page here. How to do that? Using this on client click attribute. So basically, on client click, what we want to do is call this JavaScript function validate form. Now, if you look at that function, that function is returning a Boolean value that is a true or a false. It returns true if the form succeeds validation, otherwise false. So we are returning whatever value that method returns. If it returns true, then the form will be allowed be, to be submitted to the server. Otherwise, the form will not be submitted. So with this change, let's go ahead and run the web form once again. Now look at this. I don't have any data entered. Once I click the Submit button, look at this. I don't have to wait three seconds. Now initially, we have included that system.threading.thread.sleep in our code here, which means if the form is posted to the server, it has to wait at least three seconds. But here, the validation is happening on the client side. So we don't have to wait those three seconds. Look at this. The moment I enter some data, click the Submit button, the response is instantaneous because the JavaScript is being executed on the client machine. There is no round trip between the client and the web server. So the end user is going to have better user experience because the application is more responsive now. So now let's look at the advantages of using JavaScript. So one of the uses is form validation now can be done on the client side, which reduces the unnecessary round trips between the client and the web server. This also means the load on the server is reduced and the application is more responsive, which means better user experience. JavaScript uses the client machine processing power. So now look at this. If there are 100,000 users and uh, um, you know you have this JavaScript validation, when you know if they don't enter data and then once they click the submit button, you know with that client side validation function executing on the client browser, you know you are eliminating those round trips between the client and the web server. So you have reduced essentially in this example at least the requests are load on the server by 100,000. And now here we are using the client machine processing power because on the client machine this JavaScript is executed. And with JavaScript, partial page updates are also possible. Partial page updates mean only portions of the page can be updated without reloading the entire web form. This is commonly called as AJAX. We will be discussing AJAX in detail in a later video session. JavaScript can also be used to animate elements on the page. For example, show or hide certain elements or certain sections of the page. We'll discuss all these with examples in our upcoming videos. Thank you for listening and have a great day.